In the mid-20th century, astronomers discovered that the orbital velocities of stars in galaxies do not conform to Kepler's laws. Several theories have been proposed to explain this paradox. All these theories are based on hypotheses dedicated to the problem of galaxy curves. The first hypothesis to solve the galaxy problem was based on the existence of an invisible mass in the halo of galaxies. This missing mass, called black mass, should represent almost six times the visible mass. Many forms of dark matter have been proposed. The best known is a mysterious particle that fills the galactic halo, the chameleon. The density of this matter would be so low that it would not have disturbed the solar system. The MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics, theory postulates a decrease in Newton's law with distance. The Modified Tensor Vector Scalar Gravity Theory MOG, Modified Gravity, is a variant of the MOND theory. These theories are essentially dedicated to the case of galaxies with sometimes extensions to particular cases of galaxy clusters. They are also purely mathematical and have no physical justification. However, it is possible to present a much more general solution using fluid mechanics with angular momentum. In this solution, the curves of galaxies are only a special case of the fluid flow explaining gravitation. This same fluid is used for light and for all waves of the same speed as in the Cartesian approach. Fluid particles are animated by linear Brownian motion. But an angular momentum is added to the Brownian agitation. The angular momentum is randomly distributed both in intensity and direction. In liquids and gases, these angular moments are annihilated by friction and the complexity of the molecules. Fluids with angular momentum must therefore be made up of regular spheres so that angular moments can be transmitted between particles at the same time as the momentum according to Descartes' laws. This transmission occurs during impacts between particles which undergo elastic flattening and warping. The rotational flows of fluids with angular momentum differ significantly from these flows in perfect fluids. They require compensation of the angular momentum linked to rotation by absorption of the angular momentum of the fluid particles. In the case of the type of flow used, its perfect fluid form is gradually resumed from a tangential speed of approximately 170 km per second. This speed is identical for all flows of this type. The stars of the galaxies are therefore in a transition zone whose curve can be traced. These equations are detailed in my book, Fluid Mechanics. Here are those which concern the flow which concerns the gravitation carried by a fluid filling space, an ether. The rotation of galaxies undoubtedly resembles atmospheric cyclones. These are whirls. However, for a whirl to form, Hamilton's principle requires the presence of condensation. Galactic whirlwinds like cyclones therefore have a cause, condensation. Ether condenses in matter just as water vapor condenses in the atmosphere. The whirlwind of the sun causes the planets to rotate. The tangential speed of this whirl must therefore be proportional to the inverse of the square root of the distance from the sun. Unfortunately, these whirls in perfect fluid have a tangential speed proportional to the inverse of the distance from the center of the well. This result is taken from the Lagrange equation. The energy equation. But then, there is a solution. Since the ether particles are animated not only by linear Brownian motion, but also by angular momentum, then the principle of equipartition of energy exactly doubles the energy term in the equation of Lagrange whose solution is then a tangential speed proportional to the inverse of the square root of the distance from the center of the well.
The law of flux of flow towards a well in space is 1 over r squared. Condensation is proportional to the outer surface area of the nuclei of atoms. On the other hand, the drag of the ether on the nuclei of the atoms is proportional to their apparent surface, therefore also to their exterior surface. For this condensation and this drag to be proportional to their mass, it is enough for the nuclei to be bubbles and not solid balls. We thus find Newton's law. The condensation of ether in matter is the cause of gravity. There is in fact equality of two perfectly distinct actions. Newton's law cannot, under any circumstances, express equality of actions and reactions. Each body reacts to the attraction of others by deformations and movements, but in no case by their own attraction as Newton wrote. But, the thickness of these bubbles would also have to be the same for all the atoms. This is not exactly the case. The thickness varies very slightly. This explains the mass defect, the order of magnitude of which is 10 to the minus 24 grams. As the equations show, in well whirl flow in fluid with angular momentum, the angular velocity of the overall rotation is the opposite of twice that of the rotation due to the tangential velocity variation. The rotation of the vortex requires an input of angular momentum. It can only come from the angular kinetic energy of the fluid particles. The rotation of the whirl absorbs part of the angular kinetic energy of the fluid particles. The momentum pumped by the rotation of the whirl is proportional to the angular velocity, the distance from the center of the well and the distance traveled by the particles of the angular momentum fluid. However, the angular speed is inversely proportional to the distance from the center of the well while the distance traveled is proportional to this distance. The pumped moment is therefore independent of the distance from the center of the well and the speed curves of all the whirl wells with angular moments are homothetic. The tangential velocity curve is only Keplerian beyond the visible stars of the galaxy. At such distances, the tangential speed of the swirl wells is less than 170 km per second which can be considered as the critical speed of the whirl well flow in fluid with angular momentum. At 240 km per second the sun is therefore in the intermediate zone of the galaxy. In addition, the curve of the velocities of the stars of the galaxies is modified by the progressive reduction of the stellar mass contained in the trajectory of the stars as we approach the eye of the galaxy. The curve therefore descends as the distance from the eye decreases. In the same way, when all the angular momentum of the fluid particles is absorbed, the curve of the tangential velocities of the stars increases less quickly than the inverse of the distance. Finally, when the tangential speed causes a centrifugal acceleration greater than the acceleration caused by the well flow, a calm zone is formed at the center of the flow as in terrestrial cyclones, a black hole. The deflection of light by the sun is a remarkable fact that Descartes foresaw almost 400 years ago. The condensation of ether in the sun causes deviation of the wave trains, and therefore in particular of the light which reaches us from the stars. This phenomenon can therefore be explained very simply without materialist hypotheses on the nature of time and space. Since the ether condenses in matter, the nuclei of the atoms must therefore grow gradually. The light that reaches us from very distant galaxies was emitted billions of years earlier. At that time the nuclei were smaller and therefore emitted red-shifted light compared to the emission of the same atoms today on Earth. It is therefore completely useless to suppose that galaxies are moving away from us at speeds, even apparent, which could greatly exceed the speed of light. There was no Big Bang. 
All the stars must grow, but if their density is greater inside than on the surface, the central part will grow faster than the periphery which will be stretched. The Earth's crust, in particular, expands mainly in the thinnest areas, at the bottom of the oceans. In addition, there are regular magmatic eruptions which lower the Earth's internal pressure. This explains the volcanoes, earthquakes, and large mountain ranges that emerged from the bottom of ancient seas. This expansion does not necessarily eliminate the movements of the continental plates, which could result from the entrainment by the alternating whirls of the Earth mainly in the interface zones. In application of Poincaré's theorem, the whirl concentrates in a plane which is the main plane of galaxies and the equatorial plane of stars and planets. On each side of this equatorial whirl, the ether also condenses so that whirls must appear and so on up to the poles. The zones thus formed are separated by whirl cones giving the zones alternating inverse rotations. This explains the zonal appearance of the planets. The ether causes the gases surrounding the planets to rotate. This is the case for Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The zones formed by these gases themselves form gas whirls through friction at their interfaces, as can be seen up to the pole of Jupiter. Earth's ocean currents also have a distinctly zonal nature. The phenomenon is also indisputable for terrestrial winds although it is less obvious. The rotation of the Sun on itself is essentially zonal. The inclinations of comet trajectories relative to the equatorial plane of the Sun have a zonal distribution. Retrograde comets are in the gaps in this distribution. The solar system has a zonal characteristic. The stars of galaxies are concentrated in their main plane. Fluid mechanics with angular momentum makes it possible to quantitatively explain the curve of galaxies. This approach is in no way dedicated. It explains coherently and without any hypothesis a large number of cosmological phenomena.